Hello, my name is Trey. Welcome to What Can I Change? Today we're going to be watching a couple of cop videos. I just want to react, not necessarily from a cop stand, uh, standpoint, but I want to show you kind of guys, show you guys kind of my experience that I've had with people who struggle with mental illness and people who act the way that they do. Um, I've been through these kind of restraints and stuff like this, and, but obviously I've also worked with children, but I can't show children going through that. That wouldn't be right. So it's better to see adults. So let's go ahead and get into this video. So we're watching... On August 1st, 2022, police pulled over a woman who was reported to possibly be driving under the influence. While the driver remained calm, her girlfriend quickly got upset. Got it's, yeah, it's like, Victoria. It's Shout out to crime, no. crime scene cam. 10-4. You can go in there. 27 on Lindsay. Hi there. Hi. How's it going today? She was trying to take me to the hospital. We had a depression. Okay. That right there. Immediate. Sorry, guys. I'm sitting here burping in y'all's ear. What am I, Brittany Venti? Who's that other guy? I Dubs? Isn't he like the king of burps or something? Just not that kind of shrimp, baby. When somebody says right there, that would have been a red. I'm sure the cop already knew. I'm sure the cop has dealt with plenty of people. But somebody says, I have depression. I need to go to the hospital. It's like, oh, it's about to go left. All right. Well, what's going on? Where were you coming from? We were coming from home. Where's home for you? There. Okay. Well, do you have any idea on you by chance? No, I don't know where my wallet went, so I'm oh. trying to figure that out. Okay. Can I come out? Uh, in just a minute, okay. Uh, what's your what's your first name? Victoria. Okay, so she's giving you a ride to the where she? Okay, which hospital? I don't know. Okay. Can I talk to her? I'm in just a minute. She's talk talk she's talking to that officer. So they go back and forth talking about her getting outside of the car. And so this what leads to her eventually being able to get out of the car because she keeps begging to get out of the vehicle. You know, when you deal with some people, if you've ever been around uh, some people who are dramatic and some people who really deal with uh, mental illness, but some people are super dramatic. So they'll be like, please get me out of... I'm sorry, I'm going to yell in y'all's ear, but I'll back up away from the mic. But please get me out of the car. I can't breathe. <laughs> this hurts. You're hurting me. Been through it. Been there. I mean, it's just like a struggle. It's just like the whole time they're trying to get out of not going to jail by saying they can't breathe. They need to go to the hospital. The cups are too tight. Oh, man. It's endless. But this is the normal traffic stop. You don't want to have to talk about anything if you don't want to talk about it, okay? Can you stand away from me a little bit, please? Like, a, is a foot back okay? Like, to the end of the car. Oh, like, great. A lot of women sometimes, when they're overly dramatic, and I'm not saying every woman does this, okay, please, we don't have to do that discussion. But nonetheless, the people who are over dramatic, men and women, what they'll say is, I can't she's not saying this but you'll hear this sometimes please get away from me i'm not comfortable around males and they will push that to the end of life man they'll never let it go you know just keep saying something happened to me men make me traumatic my ex fiance used to work at a, also used to work at a um, place where it was all women and i've heard so many stories and like i have my own stories but i obviously didn't work at a place with all women um, here i mainly work with men and um when, when i work with kids i normally work with boys you cool with that just a little bit yes i got it. all right cool what's that from this is when i got it we were just trying to use the gas station to the like we we're gonna go before they she to the right. hospital but okay it didn't happen okay what was the reason for stopping this? I want to know that. I just got here. I just got here. Can you ask him what the reason is? Yeah, we can you explain that. Can you ask him right now? Because I'm going to freak the f*** out. Victoria. Can you ask him? What did I tell you? I can't breathe. So let's move forward a little bit. She's going to ask about why the door isn't shut. And honestly, this part doesn't make a whole lot of sense. They were just being funny, but watch this part right quick. I I don't know. She asked, why is the door not shut? And then it shows the sergeant over here listening to music. And that's Victoria. it. We never find out what the sergeant's even doing over there. Um, but anyway, so now they go into this thing about trying to find a phone. It gets kind of weird. He keeps, she keeps asking him. And at one point in the video, um, she says, if that cop touches my girlfriend, I'm going to flip out. And that's kind of what leads us to this part. So I'm going to give you all a couple minutes before it happens. I can grab it. Where I don't it? know where it went. It might be down there. 
You don't know because you kind of drink it all, top. but um. Oh yeah, I have. Can I open the door? When you hear right. somebody say something like that, like if somebody does something, I'm gonna freak out. You already know it's coming. These kind of people, they are obviously not well, but. Some people get so attached to some people in this world that if you were to touch them, you were to say anything about them, they will flip on you and turn the script on you. And it seems so easy. And I want some people to understand this when it comes to being a cop or being somebody who works with um, people who are mental health uh, disabilities and stuff like that. Guys, there, there is no right answer every time. I know people are like, well, you could have did this. You could have did that. There's no right answer to every one of these situations. Sometimes you have protocol and you're trained and you know what the signs are. But once you're in the middle of it, one, you don't know how strong a person is going to be. You don't know how a person is going to react. Some people react completely different, right? Some people will get violent. Some people may yell. Some people may hurt themselves. Those are a lot of different scenarios going on. So you have no idea which one's going to happen. So sometimes you guys see cops do this kind of stuff and you're like, oh, I would have did this. You don't know what you would have done because everybody's different. You're talking about one specific scenario. But if you're talking about being a cop, if you're, and I'm not saying cops are always right, but if you're being a cop or you're somebody who works with these kind of people, it takes you work, you have these situations pop up every now and then. It's not like an everyday thing. And when they do pop up, they tend to be extreme, right? It's just rare that you we get a person who says, if something happens, I'm going to go crazy. And then when they do go crazy, you're like, oh, I know that exact protocol. I'll say this and I'll say this. And we'll watch more videos where the cops will try to calm down the individuals. Be like, stop, please don't, don't do this. That doesn't work. It doesn't. When people here don't stop, please, they don't care. Once they hit that threshold, it's over. Okay, I'm sure you guys probably never heard of this, but there's a threshold. I know I'm getting too detailed, but there's a threshold that everybody hits, right? And when, when a person hits their peak, like their peak uh, anger, hit their peak sadness, their IQ goes down. And what you're taught is that you cannot, trying to, you try your best, you still try to de-escalate, but your chances are going to be low because once a person hits their peak, you have to wait for them to get back down into more of a calming state, which normally is going to end with either crying or apologizing on stuff. But until you get them back down to that point, everything you say and everything you do is pretty much useless. You have to try you because you got to get them de-escalated. But just saying that kind of stuff is not going to work. Right. Because when a person hits that, like I said, their IQ goes down for a little bit and they don't think rational. Right. That's why when you see some people get so angry, they get so mad. They do stuff that's not rational because their IQ drops when they're in that state, that hype, hyperactive state. Just try to deescalate. Uh, and that's what you're going to see this cop do. But to no avail. Oh, wait, the person has to calm right there. Right there. Right there. Try your best. Right back there. OK, I'll grab in a bit here. OK, I'll just grab it a second. And I'm going to show you how long this person has escalated for a very long time. Hey, Victoria. You have any weapons with you, do you? No, I okay. have toilet paper in my pocket. Okay, you just mind just keep your hands out of your pocket. Can I for me? take this out? What's it? What is it? It's toilet paper. Okay. And my phone I'll throw in there. Okay. I was going to say, I'm going to go south. I recently, like within, I would say, a couple hours ago. So, and that's kind of making a lot more sense out of it. What's the plan for the rest of the day? Mm hmm. Good job by the cop. He's trying to distract her because he already knows this woman's about to get arrested. And as soon as that happens, she's gonna flip. He's trying to he's trying to stop it before it goes, but he's trying not to let her listen because you know she's getting madder by the second. Because look, no? yeah. okay. yeah. you guys there for? Um, I just moved in, Very nice. and then we become dating so, afterwards. But oh, okay. at first we were just friends, and then yeah. Evolved. Yeah, yeah, right on. So here's the thing though, I'm placing another arrest. Oh, no, 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 sorry, Victoria. No, 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 no. Down, 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 down. But nothing violent happens here, so nothing need to blur out anything. Down, down. Just resisting around. Roll towards you, roll towards you. Down, down. No, no, no. Don't scratch me. Don't pinch me either. One thing I'll also say is that when people are in this state, man, you'll see sometimes, and we'll watch another video one day where a cop tries to do business by himself. Even if you're a grown man, okay, somebody who is fighting against you, it is hard to restrain them, right? It's always better to have backup, but that's not always feasible. But I'm just saying, they're able to get her in handcuffs because there's two of them, but... You, 
man, other times people are extremely strong because you got to understand, you never know how strong a person is. So you try not to go in there and be, you try not to use every bit of ounce of energy you have, but some people will cause you to, right? Some people will make you use everything you got just to get them restrained, right? That's, and you got to try to keep yourself calm because in order for you to use all your strength in a lot of times, you need adrenaline and you're using your adrenaline. So you're, you're using that to help you. You're also using your anxiety and stress to help you get to that point. Cause you're, you know, you fly to flight. And so you got to keep yourself calm while trying to get this person on the, um, in their, um, Restraints, and when you're by yourself, that is extremely hard. And you, so, in another video, you're gonna see a cop. You may say, "Why did they do that, dude?" Restraining somebody is harder than it looks. Y'all think that just because men are stronger and stuff like that, that it, it it's easily to restrain a woman? It's not. It, it's not because when somebody's kicking and flailing and all that, it's hard to do that for anyone. Get off of me! <laughs> I got it's her. hard to make a person go against their will. You're okay. Oh, you get off. Don't kick me. Get off. And they're rolling and moving, trying get to hold them down. Okay. But you're also trying your best not to hurt them. No kicking. No. There. Oh. All right. No. Handcuff me. Get off. Well, unfortunately, right, you're not. So now you're going to see the escalation point has hit. Okay, we are at the escalation point. I'm going to show you a few minutes later. Um, to show you how she acts in the car. And this is what I'm talking about. This is how hard it gets to bring a person down. Once they get to this point, it's a few minutes later. Sorry for your headphones. You Stop hitting yourself. Stop. See? So that's her kicking and hitting her head. All right, some of that's kicking, and some of it she's just bashing her head against that glass panel back there, which you will see a lot of in these videos I show you. Victoria, stop hurting yourself. I had kids who used to do this against the wall. I had kids that would bust their head against the wall, right? And it's not like you make it, it's not like you let it happen on purpose, right? You never, like I said, some people, kids and individuals, I remember working with a guy. He was normal. And then one day he flipped so bad, cursing us out. Um, I had never seen a person flip so easily in my life. I remember also working with a kid who was the nicest kid you'd ever see. And one day they went from nice. I mean, they flipped out so bad, biting, spitting, hitting. And I'm just telling you guys, man, these kids will go out of their way to hurt themselves. Like I said, I had a kid that if you didn't watch him like right on, would bust his head against the wall. Oh man, it's just you, it was just a lot of work. Yeah, people expect you to be perfect, and it's like it's like I had a kid that if you just turned your head, I had a kid. If you turned your head, so let's say we're talking, I would just turn my head. Gone, I mean gone. You turn around and be like, "Hey, can I get this?" You turn back around in half a second, the kid's gone, split, ran off, right? And you you say, "Well, how do you let that happen?" It's just like. Because you got to understand, like, sometimes you just do normal things. You don't think the kid's going to take off, right? And then it's just unexpected. And this kid was never a runner, but all of a sudden they became a runner. So every time you turn your head, a kid who never ran runs all the time now. That means something happened in their life that made things change. But things, you just can't be prepared for every single thing at every single moment, you know? And this kid would just run all of a sudden, right? So it got to the point where I had to, every time I was with the kid, I had to hold the kid with me no matter where i went had to hold them and had them by my side all day and then you got people who look at you funny then they're like why don't you let the, why are you holding the kid the whole time it's like what do you want me to do i can't not let them run but also um i have to sit here and restrain them almost not restrain them but you know at least hold them because if this kid takes off the school's too big i'm not gonna be able to find him right and you look even stupider when you're chasing that kid i promise you <laughs> it's a hard decision you gotta make so you gotta try to rely on your training you know We gotta go to jail. I can't feel my hands. I can't feel my I've had so many people when I'm restraining them tell me that kind of stuff. You hear a lot of this. You're hurting me. These are too tight. Um, I can't breathe. I need to go to the hospital. 
it just never stops, man. And it's always something in the back of your head, like, well, am I hurting them? Well, I'm not hurting them. I've already checked the cuffs. I've already checked the restraints. I'm making sure I'm not hurting them in any way. But the person will make you, it may, they will make you think. You just have to rely on your training. Because if anything goes south, you can tell your boss, your supervisor, whoever, be like, I relied on my training. I did everything I was taught in the training, okay? And that doesn't always go perfect, obviously, but Victoria, training stop. is for when you get trained, you get trained in the perfect scenario. You don't get trained in what if the person bites you or what if the person kicks you right in your face and your nose starts bleeding and you're, you, all of a sudden your adrenaline goes up and now you got to stay calm. You can't train that. How are you going to, you can't break somebody's nose in training and say, all right, what would you do? Stop. You know what I'm Stop. What do you do if somebody's banging their head at, against the wall or in a pop car? In a padded room or something. They will come off at the jail eventually, but if you keep doing this, it's going to be on longer. See, see, at this point, she's already at an escalated state. There's nothing he can say that's going to get her to come down. Until they get out of the car, she's going to stay this way. So that is pretty much what goes on here. Come on, dude. I already shot at them out. DJ, I'm about to really... And so they eventually get the booking. Stop! Let me out! Are you being nice to these guys? Yes! But give me the f***ing hey. Hold on! Just breathe! Yes. Just breathe! Remember guys, she's been escalated this whole time. From where, right here, what? 1040? And obviously they cut out stuff. But we're talking at least... And we don't know how long it really took, but I think it took about 20, 25 minutes to get her from that ground all the way to booking. Right! She's I'm still escalated. Hard. That's a long time when you're a cop dealing with somebody who's escalated for that long. Okay. 25 minutes I seems like a lifetime. Them. Okay, if you, you stop did. moving them, we can you do that. You loosen them. Because we had to go to get here and then come through the process. But I told you loosen them a little before we left. But no one listened. All right. Are you going to be nice to... loosen them a okay, little are you and gonna, then I'll be okay, nice. Okay, are you going to be nice to jail staff? Yes. Okay. Can you just loosen them a little? It's a on this if I loosen them, are you gonna? You see how she's starting to cry? She's starting to come down. When people get escalated to this point, um, especially people who deal with mental illnesses, this is how it goes. They get really, and even people who don't deal with mental illness, all of us, when we get to an escalated state, when you get it, you're most angry. Now, people are different, but when you see people who are kind of like this, um, when they come down, they start crying. It, it almost an effort. Yes, no hitting. Cool. No hitting. Okay. Which one is it, your left one? <laughs> okay. All right. Personally, have rarely seen somebody get really this to this state and not cry when they finally come back down. They don't just go, okay, all fine. They normally start crying and then they just turn back to normal. Is this when I get moved? Okay, I will, try to, I will try to loosen it, okay? But you have to stay where you're at. Okay? I okay. Okay, and I can do that. <laughs> You're, My you're able to, here. You're able to move like your ass. People like this hate being restrained. It hurts. Hate it. Because, <laughs> guys, I have a past. I've been in handcuffs and I did not act anything like this. But there are certain people, when they, especially people like that, she says she deals with mental illness. Those are the people who hate being restrained. They hate being in a jail cell, they hate being in the back of a cop car. They hate being on the ground. It is you a take these fight off my feet. the entire <laughs> Because time. I can't walk. You got to respect people who work with these kind of people in like a facility. So this it's nonstop every day. Somebody's going to go off. It's rare that you don't have somebody to go off. I can move my wrist now to get me hard. Her heart rate's probably going down now. Starting to relax. So By the way, I've asthma, much. So. Okay, just keep press. Yeah, she's gonna have to go because I was. That's pretty much the end of the video. She pretty much just does that, and they're gonna say that you know she got this and that because she went against the cops. Man, I got the sniffles. I ain't gonna get the sniffles right on camera. I'm, sh I'm showing you guys these videos because I think this is a good way for me to give you guys more of an insight into my past, uh, what I've had to deal with. I've obviously had to, you know, I've been in customer service, but I also work with, like I said. People with special ed, adults, kids, I did that for a very long time, at least 20 years, right? 
in, you know, this was intermingled with me also having other jobs, right? So sometimes I'd have a job. So that's why sometimes you hear me say I was a supervisor or I was a salesman. I worked my full-time job and then I would go work with kids at another facility somewhere else for free or volunteer. And then sometimes I got paid to do it when I actually worked for an actual school in an actual district. And so that's what I mean. Some of it was voluntary and some of it was I was getting paid to do it. So that's why I had a job on top of this stuff. Kind of like I do with this YouTube thing. I have a job, but I also do this. So I can give experience with both. Well, anyway, nonetheless, I want to give you guys some kind of insight on how people deal with this, because I know some people are so critical of people who, when they see somebody getting a strain, they see somebody going through saying they can't breathe, somebody saying that it's the worst thing ever. Everybody sometimes assumed that they would do wonderful in a job like this. I see people go, people in this job are quick to leave, man. It's quick to leave. In fact, I have a story of mine. I worked a job that was so tough on me mentally. I've never had so many people tell me they hate me to my face. And that's something I, I couldn't deal with at a time. Um, that's the only time I ever actually walked away from a job like that because my mental, it was destroying me. It was destroying me. Yeah, I, I, it's rare that you meet people and you, because I took it personally, which is the number one rule you don't do. I had a job and because it was so intense every single day, I worked with a person who was diabetic, who would eat food to make them go into diabetic shock. You know what I mean? That was tough to deal with. This person would steal food just to make themselves go into diabetic shock, right? And you and I'm the, I'm the primary person over them every single day, right? I had people tell me all the time that they hate me to my face. They didn't want to be around me. They, I mean, it was just like, and it wasn't personal because it. they just, people like this, they just pick a target. It doesn't matter who you are. They're going to pick you. The same thing we see what you'll see in other videos with these cops. Sometimes somebody be like, I like you as a cop, but man, that mother, man, that mother, it'd be like, and they'll kick somebody and they'll be like, but I like you. They just pick targets. It doesn't matter who you are and they'll flip on you any chance they get. But I, anyway, I took it personally um, because I had never had anybody or anyone or this many people, may I say, um, tell me that they hate me to my face and they didn't want to be around me and they would fight me and all this kind of stuff, being bitten, being spit on, being kicked. It, it just took a toll on me. It was a lesson learned, but obviously I'm better at it today because I'm used to it now. But back then, it was tough on me and that was a life lesson. So it's not easy, man. I know you guys want to say in a perfect world, a cop should do this, a cop should do that. Everybody wants to play um, the the trainer and everything, but you just don't know and people, they react terrible sometimes. I've had people react bad. I've had people put their hand around a kid's neck. I, I've seen it. And it happens, right? Because some people don't know what to do in certain situations. Or sometimes they lose their head. I had another woman who, who smacked the kid, right? You can't hit kids, right? You can't hit people. You can't hit these people, right? Even if they're attacking you, you're not trained to slap back. You know what I mean? But some people, they lose their head. I've never smacked the kid personally, but I've seen it happen. And I'm not necessarily, I don't think that person's a terrible person. Everybody snaps. In fact, it's to the point where sometimes when you're in the middle of these interactions, like these cops are, they'll tell you to leave. Some people will tell you to be like, all right, you got to go. Because when you're in this, sometimes you don't think rationally. I've had people tell me to leave the room and other people have been told to leave the room. Sometimes you're told to leave because you are the target and the person is blowing up because of you. So you have to be the one to leave. Or sometimes you get out of control and you be told to leave. Right. You're doing something and some people can just look at you and be like, OK, he's, he's out of it. And there's debriefing time. After all this, I don't know what cops do necessarily. I just know my training from dealing with these kind of situations. You're told to go take like a five, 15 minute, five to 15 minute break after this kind of stuff. Even if you did everything right, they still tell you to go take a break. Normally, your supervisor will be like, go take a break. And then when you get back, they go take a break. Everybody needs to have a debrief. So it's a hard situation. I just want people to know that this is not easy. Okay? Dealing with these kind of people. And my last thing, I've dealt with these kind of customers, too. When I worked in customer, not necessarily customer service, but I worked with people who lost their houses I was responsible for releasing money to people, right? I was responsible for releasing up to a million dollars. That's the most I've ever seen. But I, I was responsible for looking at all documentation and telling people, hey, you're going to get $50,000 next week. Or I have to tell them, you're not getting any money. You didn't do anything right. Or I have to tell people, hey, your contractor that you hired to fix your house stole your money. And now you don't have anything. 
You know how hard that is and how many times I get cussed out, how many times I hit their people cry, how many times people said they were going to come find me and take my life. That's hard to deal with every day. And I was working 10 hour shifts when I was doing that. So 10 hours a day, I just had people saying they were going to take my life, they hate me, and then they cry and I have to tell them, hey, your money got stolen. Or I have to tell you, hey, you're not getting any money. Your house is gone. You're never going to see any of this. I had people who were dealing with the same tragedy for 10 years. They've been working to try to get their house for fixed for 10 years. Man, I, it's crazy to think about these days because I don't deal with that. I just, I'm finally done with it. I, I, don't, I told myself I'm not going to be in that those situation anymore. I'm trying to work myself towards something else. Actually, the job I'm, I'm working on now is just as stressful, but it's way more calm. It's the situations are just as serious, but because I live in a small town, it's not as many incidents. So it's not like I'm not working with people who are having serious issues, but it's calmer now. Back then I was in a big city, so there were so many more people. I'm talking to hundreds and hundreds of people on that phone that I talked to. You know, I was working with special ed kids. I worked at a district of nine schools, nine schools. So you're talking thousands of kids. So it's completely different now. Anyway, let me know what y'all think, man. I know. Um, y'all think the cops are always bad. No, I, I'm not going to say that. I know some people think that cops are bad or they don't know what they're doing. Dude, every situation is hard. I can tell you, if you had watched me over my life, you just saw the screw ups I made. It's not easy dealing with these kind of people, man. It's just not. Okay. Anyway, welcome to the first cop video. Goodbye.